adventure through Africa. From its wild coasts to its extreme deserts. Immense mountains and remote swamps. A journey with a different view. The most exciting drama the continent has to offer. For a better understanding of Africa and its wildlife. Massive Africa, Mashatu. In the eastern extremity of Botswana lies an extraordinary land of contrast. With Zimbabwe to the north and South Africa to the south. A place where biomes collide. It is named after the myriad Mashatu trees that line its rivers. But to those more familiar with its wonders, this is the land of giants. Enormous baobab trees, some in their fifth millennium, stand guard above all who call Mashatu home. The Limpopo River converges with the Shashi River. When the rains wash over the landscape, it breathes a sigh of relief. be fooled, for the long, merciless dry season looms, and life can either flourish or be snuffed out in an instant. For many of Mashatu's predators, this is their boom time. Just two weeks old, the fresh eyes of African wild dog pups explore their new world. Under the care and strict surveillance of their mother, the alpha female. Her carefully chosen den conceals her precious pups all nine of them. These first weeks are critical for the new pack members. This is where their family bond solidifies. One that is key to becoming nature's most successful hunting unit. Beyond the boundaries of the den, the war for water has begun. A dusty gathering of creatures converges on what remains of the rivers and pools. resources open a door of opportunity for Mashatu's most calculating predators, Nile crocodiles.
giraffe know the limitations of their graceful bodies. Having a drink is an awkward task that leaves them open to attack. For all, every sip is a risk. A risk they must take. Vigilance is key. And timing is everything. Elephants are wary around some of Africa's most powerful jaws. The half-ton crocodile has waited months for the dry season. Another day will do no harm. Besides, she has a more pressing matter to attend to. One that draws her beyond the high water mark. With babies in tow, wise elephant mothers know the risks that lurk at the water's edge. But they have a plan B. Dig. They tap into the water that lingers below the ground. It may not be much, but it's enough to quench their thirst for now. As the turmoil of the day subsides, the crocodile reveals a softer side to her armored exterior. The time has come to lay her eggs. Using her hind legs, she painstakingly carves a sandy incubator. The nest is ready, and now she waits. As the night draws on, she goes into a trance-like state. Egg by egg, this fierce mother deposits her brood, up to 80 of them. soft earth will give the eggs the warmth they need over the next three months. The weeks draw on, and the waters continue to recede. A fateful hourglass. Time is running out. Finding water becomes difficult, even for those that otherwise rule these plains. Oh. 
not willing to risk the dark pools. This lioness surveys the elephant's holes. But being in such short supply, water is not for sharing. For a water monitor, the river's edge has a different appeal. He's a master egg thief. A mother crocodile may be cold-blooded, but her maternal instincts are strong. An attempt at her nest would surely be suicide. But in desperate times, the motto, fortune favors the brave, could mean the difference between life and death. He tastes the air for chemical signals that tell him about the area and who's in it. His chemical treasure map leads him towards the cool shrubbery. He's too late. Another monitor has beaten him to it. But Mama Croc is never too far away. Half a ton of maternal wrath hurtling in his direction, a single egg is all the monitor gets. With the pools reduced to muddy pits, everybody searches desperately for a safe place to drink. crocodiles, it forces their prey to come ever closer. The mud may be a sticky hindrance, but their aquatic advantage still remains. With less room, smaller crocs must move out of the way for the big guns. nowhere else for antelope to drink, the crocodiles don't even bother to hide. With split-second reflexes, the impala dodge the jaws of death. But for how long? The dry season marches on. And in the dusty, orange-hazed morning, the wild dog pack sets off to secure a meal big enough to feed an extra nine hungry mouths. The pups are larger and more boisterous. But 
they are not yet ready to join the hunt. A designated carer stays behind to keep watch over them. A tiring task, even for an animal capable of running 50 kilometers a day. Luckily, help is on the way. The rest of the pack returns with stomachs full of food. Regurgitated meat, already partially digested, makes it easier for the young pups to consume, giving them extra energy to grow strong. They will need it, for their time of free meals is drawing to a close. Across the valley, a multi-ton migration is on the move. Colossal beings tread a familiar path on their journey to water. A path older females know well. The location of underground pockets of water is passed on from matriarch to matriarch. as is the knowledge of what plants, bark or roots hold the most sustenance. But in the driest years, sometimes the hidden water fails them. few muddy sips, not enough to sustain the herd. They must keep moving. Their abandoned craters provide a few mouthfuls for thirsty baboons. in the exposed riverbed, they're vulnerable to Mashatu's predators. And this leopard is not the only one to notice them. An African rock python, the largest snake here, and more than capable of killing a baboon. But her timing is off. The frenzied baboons escape to the tree line, thwarting both hunters.
the python's not done. She's found a new, more accessible target. Her strike lasts a quarter of a second. Then her powerful coils do the rest. Leopard has lost the element of surprise. From the safety of the treetops, the baboons sound the alarm. consolation prize, the remains of a long-dead baby baboon. An unfussy eater, he'll take whatever he can. Elephants are luckier and have finally struck water. It's not just to wet the throat. It's a full body experience. and their find is celebrated accordingly by the entire herd. These last remaining water holes bustle with life as fishing parties flock to their banks. Using her bill that's as sensitive as fingertips, this saddle-billed stalk probes blindly into the murky water. The Hammerkorb takes a different approach. While the stalk stabs wildly, the Hammerkorb uses fancy footwork to dislodge hidden creatures. Being the tallest stalk on earth, the saddle-billed stalk can wade into the deepest parts of the pool. While the stumpy Hammerkorb must keep to the shallows. Success for the stalk. After some dexterous maneuvering, fish always go down head first to avoid being stuck in her narrow gullet. And the search continues. The shrinking pools play perfectly to the stalk's advantage. It's like shooting fish in a barrel. They're not the only ones taking advantage of the drought. The tension is now palpable as the biggest crocodiles jostle for the best position. 
The Impala must wade through thick, sticky sludge for a drink, becoming bogged down with each nervous step. jaws are inescapable. But he's not the only hungry croc here. As the reptiles vie for their share of the kill to avoid a subaquatic brawl, he escapes to enjoy his meal in peace. The others must resume their deadly vigil at the water's edge. In the very height of the dry season, the wild dog pups have awoken with a ferocious appetite. Four months old, they no longer have a home base and are constantly on the move. Today is a special day for them. They are ready to accompany the pack on their first hunt. It's time. The pack sets off. Locking in sync, they converge into their potent formation. The pups are learning from the best. The pace is fast, and they need to keep up. With dogged determination, they close in on their target. <laughs> This time, the pups get the first serving. of minutes, the feeding frenzy strips the carcass clean. As the season reaches boiling point, the thirsty lands look up to the unwavering sky a plea for liberation from these trying times. A catfish, able to survive in barely a few inches of water, navigates his puddle. But he has another problem. There is no escape, and a crocodile is not one to miss out on an easy kill. At this moment, Mother Nature 
makes her grand entrance. The heavens erupt. Rains saturate the desperate lands, filling every crevice and crack. Oblivious to the rain's arrival, the crocodiles brawl and scrap over the prize. The floodgates have opened, and Mashatu turns from dry desolation to raging rapids. As the river rises, the croc returns to the water to feast. The violence of the first storm of the season abates, leaving the landscape transformed. Now in full flood, the life-giving waters wash away the debris left over from more trying times. The water seeps into the soil, signaling the rise of a sleeping giant. Throughout the dry season, giant bullfrogs lay dormant beneath the surface. With the rains, they emerge and within a few moments begin staking out territories, hoping to attract the eye of the females. These two kilogram frogs do not appreciate uninvited intruders. Channeling air into their backs, they inflate like balloons to seem larger. But this is no empty threat. Giant bullfrogs are armed with bony canines. Deployed in battle against rivals. Only the kings of the ring will claim the right to breed. They're not the only amphibians with breeding on the brain. Mating season is in full swing for all Mashatu's frogs. The Harmacorp won't pass up on a two-for-one special. The male and female glued together during the mating ritual are inseparable, while the Hammerkorp tries to make head or tail of the amphibious clump. finally realizes he's bitten off more than he can chew.
From the sandy banks, another ancient ritual is playing out. A faint sound catches the mother crocodile's attention. This is the moment she has been waiting 80 days for. A new set of eyes peers out for the first time from her sandy incubator. Pushing herself out of her egg is her first test of strength. In quick succession, her brothers and sisters surface. To survive, they need to reach water soon. seem like a frightening act of infanticide is in fact a gentle gathering of her hatchlings. Not a scale on their tiny bodies is harmed as she jostles them into the soft skin sack at the base of her immense jaw. to the water and deposits them in a safe nursery. She will keep a watchful eye on them for the next two weeks. While they learn to navigate the murky waters of croc life. The rains have breathed new life into the landscape. Along the once barren branches, green leaves have erupted and buds have begun to bloom. Red-billed buffalo weavers celebrate the coming of the new season, busily renovating their communal nests. They're not the only ones. Signs of new life are everywhere.
the abundance of water has eased the soul of the savannah. And for some, it couldn't have come sooner. The journey has finally come full circle for the elephant herd. And not a moment is taken for granted. The water-loving giants wallow in momentary bliss. The Shashi River is now in full flow. Its lifeblood now presents challenging fishing for gangly marabou storks and for the wild dog pups, it presents an unfamiliar obstacle. They are now fully grown, but in their short lives, this is the first time they've seen a river this swollen. They must reach their hunting grounds on the other side. But it's a daunting obstacle. Finally, they muster the courage and make the crossing, taking the new experience in their stride. They have every reason to be wary. For below the languid waters, monsters in the making dwell. Although it will be many years before these hatchlings can catch prey as large as a wild dog. For now, they hone their skills on something more realistic. Eyes locked on target, this small croc needs no hunting lessons. She was born with all the killer instincts she'll need to survive. But when there's competition, slow and steady doesn't always win the race. She's been outmaneuvered by a baby bullfrog. He, too, is new to the art of the hunt, and his technique could do with a bit of work. Waiting in the wings, the young croc lies, still, ready. This successful hunt is only the start of her journey to becoming one of Africa's most fearsome predators.
the ebb and flow of life along the Mashadu continues, ancient and unstoppable. After a few short months of respite, the dry season looms once again. The young wild dogs are now a year old, fully grown, and have taken their place in the pack. Hunting is no longer a spectator sport. They are now master huntsmen. Their light chatter and playful antics are a pre-hunting bonding ritual, preparing themselves for the daily hunt. At the alpha male's signal, they set off. dogs rely on speed, endurance, and teamwork. They run their prey to exhaustion. Chaos and confusion are the pack's deadly allies. Like in any good team, each member claims their fair share of the prize. is full, the pack can rest. For now. Soon there will be even more mouths to feed. The alpha female is pregnant. And every member will need to play their part in raising the next generation. Preparing them for life in the mighty Mashatu. The land of giants. Thank you. 